welcome to this video. Today I thought we would get some questing done in Liyue as we just finished the Archon quest and now we've got a bunch of stuff to do. So I thought first we could go and see Madame Ping with a teapot to call home. Because I think this quest unlocks a bunch of new uh, bunch of new gameplay which is exciting and then today's the first day of the lantern right and I need to complete this quest so we're gonna do that as well because I'm very excited to start the lantern right I know you're supposed to have done Yolan's story quest but I've only just unlocked story quests and I wanted to do some hangouts first so we are going to quick start Ah children come come <laughs> you've arrived at just the right moment I've been looking for you Oh what is it granny need any help Oh, no, no. You've done so much for Liyue Harbor already. I could hardly ask for more. In fact, my old friends and I have been putting our heads together to think of what sort of gift we might give you in return. A gift? For Paimon? You're too kind. <laughs> oh, child. You are so very modest. Uncommonly so, even. But you mustn't decline this gift. I simply won't allow it. When you traversed my old teapot in search of the cleansing bell, I heard your little friend mention that you often camp out in the wilds. That simply won't do. Especially since I imagine you still have a very long journey ahead of you. Fortunately, I have not yet grown so old as to see my subspace creation abilities atrophy. What subspace creation? Oh, did my friends never mention that to you? Well then, it is a blessing we old folks once received from Rex Lapis. Part of our illumination, if you will. I will not go into too much detail. But subspace creation is the ability to create a small, autonomous pocket world. The teapot that you entered previously was a little trinket created using that ability. Trinket, you say? So, in the eyes of an Adeptus, creating a magic teapot world is just child's play, huh? Oh, indeed, the teapot is nothing to boast of. One such as myself must depart from this realm to create a world of one's own. Rex Lapis, on the other hand, moved mountains and seas. That is what one might call an exercise of true power. Uh, but that's enough nostalgia for now. The gift that I have prepared for you just requires a few final materials to add the finishing touch. I can help you look for them. That's right! Finding stuff's what we're good at, after all! Oh, settle down now, children. There's no need for you to go running hither and thither. I have already found a fleet-footed youngster to prepare what I need. What's more, I doubt that you would know how to find the materials I am searching for. Some of them are very rare indeed these days. And what are those if I might ask? Well, for starters, I require some shimmer soil from the banks of Dihua Marsh. Back in the day, it could only be found where the glazed lilies thrived most profusely. You would have to dig downward, following the roots of the glazed lilies. And if you were lucky enough, you just might find a small patch of shimmer soil there. But almost no one has been able to find Shimmer Soil in this manner since Dihua Marsh came to be the way it is today. Even more difficult to find is Maragdus Jadeite, which must be chiseled from the rock of the chasm. Or 
So it used to be. Ever since the Blackcliff Forge opened for business, they've slowly but surely stripped the mines all but completely bare of it. In any case, Smaragdus Jadeite is an adept eye treasure, and the adeptal power within is not something that most humans can withstand. Extended contact with it is, in fact, harmful to humans. Ah, <sighs> goodness knows if that child will succeed in finding these items. Who's this child? Well, since you're an Adeptus, Granny, the person you asked for help, they must be an Adeptus too, right? Hmm, yes. I suppose she does count as an Adeptus. She counts? How come there are so many Adepti in Leoa Harbor? We seem to bump into them all the time. It feels like even when you go out to eat, you could be sitting next to an Adeptus and never even know it. <laughs> Maybe so. Who can say? A fair few of my old friends are rather fond of mundane mortal life, after all. I'm back, Granny. <sighs> oh, I don't believe we've met. Ah, allow me to do the honors. This child here is Yen Fei. She's the one helping run some errands for me. Yen Fei? I believe you've already heard of the Traveler and her traveling companion. Of course, who hasn't? Much has been written about you in the Millilith's records. You became one of Liyue's most wanted after the Millilith marked you as a suspect following the incident at the Rite of Dissension. After which, you fought off the Millilith at Julian Karst and made contact with the Fatui, before finally defeating an ancient god together with Granny and her associates, and subsequently being cleared of any and all suspicion by the Chising. <sighs> what a shame. Shame? A shame that we didn't meet sooner. Yanfei, you have my whole heart. If we had, well, I can't say that I would have been able to clear you of suspicion immediately, but it certainly would have been less, uh, embarrassing for you. Allow me to introduce myself once more. I'm Yenfei, a legal advisor. Got a legal problem? You can come right to me. Oh, yes, here's my business card. You'll find it has my contact details and office address. Keep it handy. If you have an urgent issue, just leave me a note at this address. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, I offer a very generous discount for first-time customers. All right, Yenfei, all right. Let's get to the business at hand. I do not think these two are in any dire need of legal assistance at the moment. You'll have to excuse Yanfei. She's always been like this, ever the talkative one when it comes to her own affairs. Are you really an adeptus? Paima was gonna ask the same question. You seem really different from the ones we've met before. An adeptus? Uh, I guess, kinda. My old man said he was one anyway. He mentioned that he once campaigned with Rex Lapis for a long old time, and then after that was all over, he went back and married my mom. They had me, and once I was all grown up, the two of them upped and left on a journey, leaving me with Granny here. Um, okay. Well, that's a bit casual for an adeptus. Aren't you guys supposed to sign solemn contracts to protect Leo at Harbor and all that stuff? What do you mean he just went back to get married? Well, my dad did say that he'd talked it through with Rex Lapis and that he was fine with it. Even contributed towards the wedding gift, apparently. Anyway, let's not dwell on that too much. So, Granny, I've gotten a hold of most of the stuff you asked for, except for Smaragdus Jadeite. I couldn't find any at all. Is that so? Hmm. But Smaragdus Jadeite is really rather essential. Yenfei, are you sure you can't find some other way? They have helped Liyue greatly, after all. It is only right that they are duly rewarded. I know, Granny, you've told me a thousand times already. Well, the chasm's definitely a no-go, but there's still a chance we can figure out some alternative means of procurement. Hmm. Hold on a moment. Let me have a look. Whoa! That's a really thick book! What kind of things do you write in there? Commercial consultancy. Or... or... Snezhnaya... Ah! Found him! Krossel! 
a Snezhnayan merchant who once came to me with some legal queries on certain articles in the legal codices. If my memory serves, all of them had to do with rare ores. He mentioned that he was considering acquiring some Smaragdus Jadeite to make hairpins, and wanted to know if there were any legal ramifications that he should be aware of. Said he was planning to sell them in Snezhnaya. So, I guess I'll go look for him. With any luck, he'll have gotten his hands on some Smaragdus Jadeite, or might have an idea of where we can find some. I'll come with you. Oh, you <clears throat> want to join me? I suppose that's no problem, but it's best if you just stand by and watch. If you try to get involved, you'll only risk placing yourself in legal jeopardy. Wow, an adeptus imploring us to avoid incurring legal liability. That's a first for sure. <laughs> best we be a little more careful than usual while we're with her. Off we go to find Crossel. I love Yanfei, she's so cute. I've really played her. I got her from a lucky wish on my other account. I'll keep this close. When I was trying a couple temples for the Wanderer. But I still haven't got around to building her yet. Hello, Mr. Crossel. How's business been? Oh, good, very good. All thanks to your advice, Miss Yanfei. What brings you here today? <laughs> You're too kind. I was simply doing my job. Now, I believe that the last time we met, you mentioned that you were looking to source some Smaragdus Jadeite to make hairpins. Have there been any further developments on this front? Uh, well, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, in the end I did acquire a small piece of Smaragdus Jadeite and had it fashioned into a pair of hairpins. Miss Yanfei, might I presume that you have an interest in the hairpins? I must apologize, I have already rented them out to a lady named Zhe Xiao. If you'd like to inspect them, you may have to wait quite some time. Wait! Smaragdus Jadeite really rare? Aren't you worried about the hairpins getting damaged or lost while they're being rented out? No, I'm not worried in the slightest because I signed a contract with Ms. Zhu Chiao before renting them to her. The contract makes it quite clear that if she loses or damages the item in question, she must compensate me for its full original value. In return, I included a clause that guarantees the Smaragdus Jadeite is genuine, with a penalty of ten times the item's value payable by me to Ms. Jichiao in the event that it is shown to be a fake. No ambiguities there. Guaranteed genuine, with ten times the value payable if this claim is shown to be false. Yes, these terms are very clear indeed. Of course. This way, both the client and I have the assurance we need. To ensure fairness, each of us has retained an original copy of the contract. In that case, might you know where Miss Zhe Chao lives? We'd like to pay her a visit and have a look at the hairpins. Oh, of course. She wrote her address down when we signed our contract. Here, I'll mark it on your map for you. Thanks a lot, Mr. Crossel. We'll be off now. Let's go see these hairpins. No, wrong place. Oh. Feel free to look around. There's no obligation to buy. We're looking for the Liyue volume of the Tibet Travel Guide. Do you have it in stock? Sorry, dear. We stopped stocking that a very long time ago. It just wasn't selling. Huh? But the Mondstadt volume was so interesting. Bummer. Guess we're doing this quest as well today. <laughs> uh. The thing is... The author made it too personal, and the result wasn't really much of a guide. It barely sold any copies, and the few travelers that did buy it made complaints afterward. 
content was a little too wild, huh? Well, that's a shame. The Mondstadt volume was a good read, even just as an adventurer's diary. The fact remains that I don't have it in stock. If you must read it, try your luck at Chang the Ninth's place. Who's Chang the Ninth? A book collector who lives in Qingse Village. He's a complete grouch. But he will behave himself if the conversation is about books. He was a regular customer here back when he lived in Liyue Harbor. And I still send him the odd out-of-print book or two every now and then. Did somebody say out-of-print books? I never knew that he had kitten heels. <laughs> is there a chance that Volume 6 of Legend of the Shattered Halberd is also in his collection? Who are you? Apologies, my leash. Where are my manners? My name is Sing Cho, a humble literature enthusiast who happened to be passing by. Since you and I are both in search of lost books, what say we travel together to Mount Jingse and pay a visit to Cheng the Ninth? Makes sense. Please lead the way. My pleasure, fellow book lover. Okay. Okay, that wasn't Should we to appear to have a copy of the Liyue volume of the Tibet Travel Guide? It's super duper interesting! That wasn't supposed to happen. But it's fine. Ah. We just crossed the cutscene. <sighs> well, I guess we're doing those two quests. In this one. And... We'll do the crane returns on the wind in the next one. <laughs> oh, whatever shall I do? Excuse me, are you just Shaw? Is that how you say it? Oh my god, my memory is so bad. Y yes, that's me. Is there something I can help you with? How do you do, Monsieur Chow? We understand from Mr. Crossel that you recently rented a pair of hairpins from him. My associates and I are very interested in them. Would you mind letting us take a look at them? The hairpins? <sighs> I can't lend them to you right now. I... I've lost them. I don't know how it could have happened. I always kept them right by my side, and I hadn't even worn them yet. I spent so much money on them. If I have to pay their original value... There's no way I could come up with that amount of money on such short notice. Why did you need them in the first place? I... My family is in the ore business, too, but business has been suffering ever since the chasm was sealed off. We now have a backlog of paid-up orders just sitting around, so we've been having to purchase some stock from other ore merchants to complete them. A big banquet is coming up in a few days, and several ore merchants I know of will be there. I need this opportunity to mingle and discuss prices. That's what the hairpins were for, to... Well, to keep up appearances. I can't have them looking down on me. But now that I've lost the hairpins, what will I do? Ah, why does Paimon have a sudden strong sense of deja vu? Maybe because this is the part where we say we can help. W would you really? I sent a commission to the Adventurers Guild, but I haven't heard anything back from them yet. Hold on. Don't run off looking for the hairpins just yet. Mr. Chow, would you let me have a look at the rental contract you signed? Huh? Well, I mean, sure, I have it right here. Here you are. Let me see. Hmm. That's right! Yanfei said she's a legal advisor, didn't she? Maybe she can help Jichao somehow. That would be a little unfair to Crossel. True. Though surely there must be a win-win solution. Right. I finished reading the contract. The terms are very clear. And they do indeed stipulate that you must pay Mr. Crossel the original value of the hairpins as compensation for the loss. Furthermore, the contract also expressly states that the amount of compensation must take current market prices into account. And given the rarity of Smaragdus Jadeite, I fear that the final amount of compensation may end up being significantly higher as a result. Even higher? Oh no! Uh-oh! Just how it looks like she's about to faint. However, all of this is assuming that it is indeed genuine Smaragdus Jadeite that was inlaid into the hairpins. Did you really have to pause before saying that part? Anyway, the hairpins are lost, so how exactly would we be able to find out if the Jadeite is genuine or not? 
Whichever way you look at it, we've got to start by finding those hairpins. Except that if we found the hairpins, there'd no longer be any need to check whether the Jadeite is genuine, would there? Uh, seems right. Please. Please, I... Don't trouble yourselves over this. The fact is, I lost the item, and I should pay compensation per the contract. Such a huge sum of money, though. However much it is, I will have to pay it. My family are merchants, after all. It's vital that we keep our word and respect our contracts. Now that it's come to this, I really shouldn't keep Crossel in the dark any longer. I'll go and inform him of the issue, and then... negotiate the amount of compensation. Yes, legally speaking, it seems this is the most sensible course of action. But before that, I have some questions about the hairpins. So hold on a moment, Monsieur Chow. When you first touched the hairpins, what did you feel? What did I feel? Well, I remember that the gemstones set into the pins were perfectly smooth to the touch, like the finest quality jade. My family has seen much jade pass through its hands in the past, so... I am quite certain of my judgment in this matter. Hmm. Smooth to the touch. Finest quality jade. Something the matter? No, it's nothing. I just need to re-examine a few things. Let's head over to Mr. Crossel's. Back we go again. Hope we don't trigger any cutscenes this time. Ah, oh, Miss Yanfei, you've returned. With Miss Jichao and To, too, I see. How are the hairpins? I trust you're quite satisfied with them? Hmm. About that. You lost them? Are you serious? Do you have any idea how expensive they were? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Truly, I am. I'll pay the compensation as per our contract. Every last Mora. Mora? <laughs> Do you have any idea what I had to go through to get my hands on that Smaragdus Jadeite? I... I just don't... <sighs> Forget it. Talking won't bring them back. Since Miss Yanfei is here, I suppose we can just have her estimate the amount that needs to be paid. No problem. But before I can give an official estimate, I'll need to do a little market research. Ah, yes. And if I may just confirm again, it was in fact genuine Smaragdus Jadeite inlaid into the hairpins, correct? Of course. Genuine article guaranteed, or I pay back ten times the value. All right. Understood. I'll conduct some market research, and once I'm back, I'll provide an official assessment of the sum owed by Mr. Chow in compensation. Please wait here, Mr. Crossel. Thank you very much. <laughs> How could she lose my hairpins? She'd better pay every last mora that they're worth. Looks like I'll have to find some way to raise that money. Please wait, Mr. Chow. I have something to discuss with you. It's not convenient to speak here, so let's find somewhere that we can sit and talk in more detail. Go. Yanfei seems like she's up to something. Miss Yenfei, what is this about? Are you... Are you here to tell me how much I owe? No. What I wanted to talk about is, there is a chance that the Orin laid on those hairpins may not be Smaragdus Jadeite after all. Not Smaragdus Jadeite? Really? What do you mean? Are you implying that you already sneaked off and found them? Obviously not. I'm no adventurer, let alone a member of the guild. I don't run thankless, time-consuming errands for a living. Let's just say I made some deductions. I don't know if Granny told you this, but Smaragdus Jadeite is found deep underground and contains very concentrated elemental energy. 
If mere mortals come into contact with it, well, they'll be sick in the best case. And in the worst case, they could even experience a dramatic change of personality. It most certainly would not be smooth to the touch. Mr. Chow, did you at any time feel unwell while the hairpins were in your possession? No, not at all. I felt perfectly fine the whole time. Not even the slightest bit unwell. I didn't feel anything special at all, in fact. Hmm. Now that is strange. I noticed earlier that there were elemental traces in Mr. Crossell's vicinity. If I have deduced correctly, he may still have this Maragdus Jadeite in his possession. If that's the case, we should go confront him right now and expose his dirty scam right to his face! Absolutely not. If we were to confront him now, there's no way he would admit to it. Eventually, he would find some argument to compel us to leave. And then, he'd throw the Smaragdus Jadeite into the sea the moment we were gone. After that, he would simply insist that Mr. Chow pay up per the contract. He would lose nothing. Meanwhile, we would have to look under every stone in Liyue, hoping and praying that the hairpins do actually still exist somewhere in this world. A very vivid description. So vivid that Paimon thinks it might be experience talking. Oh, it certainly is. I've seen my fair share of situations like this, and brute force methods are certainly one way of resolving them. Fortunately, I have far more elegant solutions at my disposal. I'll share them with you in due course. Well then, since you're so experienced in dealing with problems like this, perhaps you could help me, Miss Yunfei. Oh, that won't be a problem. But first, Mr. Chow, can I ask you to please sign this contract? Huh? Does there have to be a contract for everything? Paimon can't even keep track. If I heard one more of every time I hear the word contract. It feels like Yanfei is even more concerned with them than a certain someone else we know. These are my formal terms of engagement. Everything prior to now has just been pro bono advice. But for me to investigate any further, I require a written contract. Any work commissioned but not bound by a contract cannot be relied upon. I understand. Then I will be glad to place this matter into your capable hands if you will take it, Miss Yunfei. No problem. Just sign here, and I'll sign too. Okay. Now write your address here, and then sign on this page as well. And I'll also need your signatures on pages 5, 7, and on the very last page. Finally, if you could just use this ink pad to make a handprint over here. <sighs> this contract has so many pages! Paimon's all out of brain juice again. Such an ordeal. All right, that should do it. My fees are the same as always, and they're written in the contract. Have a look through and let me know if you have any questions. I've had a read through. Everything checks out. Well then, here's your copy of the contract. I will retain the other copy. Need me to do anything? Not for now, no. Despite how intractable this problem might sound, it will actually be quite straightforward to resolve once we've got some things squared away. I don't believe you have been part of an investigation like this before. In which case, hopefully this should be quite the experience. Miss Yunfei, I have to ask, why are you helping me? Because, as it happens, I'm currently trying to acquire some Smaragdus Jadeite myself. I notice strong traces of geo energy around Mr. Crossel, so perhaps he has, in fact, secured some. Whether he actually made it into an item of jewelry or not is a separate matter. But either way, it's a lead. As long as we follow it, who knows? We might just be able to get our hands on some Smaragdus Jadeite. Also, the idea of someone abusing the law to their advantage, I won't stand for it. But again, let's not dwell on this. Let's go to... Hmm... Where can we find someone who processes ore? Ha! Ah, I've got it! Let's pay a visit to Chateau, the boss of the Jade Mystery. He's a professional when it comes to working with stone and ore. If Mr. Crossel had his ore worked on at all, Chateau would undoubtedly have been his first choice. Go speak to Shito. Why, hello there, honored customers. Welcome to. Th oh, I I it's you, Miss Yenfei. Is 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 something the matter? 
Sh surely not more spurious claims that that my jade betting is rigged and, and no one can ever win. Oh, I swear on all that is sacred. No, nothing of the sort. Has a Snezh9 merchant named Crossel enlisted your ore processing services recently by any chance? A Snezh9 merchant named Crossel, you say? Hmm, I do remember that. He brought me a piece of ore, claiming that it was Smaragdus Jadeite. That was the first time I'd ever encountered it, so I had no way of telling if it was really Smaragdus Jadeite or not. But if a customer insists, far be it from me to contradict them. He was quite generous with his money, too, so I didn't give it too much thought. I processed the ore as per his request. Hmm. Do you have any leftover debris from your work on it? Uh, why, yes. It was my first time encountering this ore, after all, so I kept a few loose shavings to study myself later. They're right over there, in fact. Thank you, sir. We'll take a look at them. Well, that's very convenient. Huh? If my eyes don't deceive me, the cross sections and patterning suggest that these are Smaragdus nephrite shavings. Smaragdus nephrite? Yes. It's not particularly rare, nor is it especially valuable. It's used to make jewelry all the time. I've heard it said that Smaragdus nephrite is in fact the outer layer of Smaragdus jadeite, though no one's ever proven it. A thin layer of separation, huh? If you must see for yourself, try examining these shavings for traces of elemental energy. Smaragdus nephrite is an entirely ordinary ore, containing no elemental energy whatsoever. Is that so? Well, we might as well give elemental sight a shot. So, did you find anything? Not a trace of elemental energy. So they really are different. But wait, how come Jichou was able to tell what it was just by looking at the shards? That's pretty awesome. There's nothing special to it. It just so happens that I've come across a great many of these in my time. Why couldn't Shito tell them apart? These two stones actually look very similar. Someone without a deep understanding of them would find it very difficult to tell them apart. There may be only a subtle difference for the casual viewer, but that translates to an astronomical difference in terms of the market price. And, I'm sure, a significant difference in the cost of having them carved into shape. All right, let's focus up. We're going off on a tangent. But, never mind, Shirto. Why would Mr. Crossel... <sighs> unusual actions have unusual reasons behind them. Let's take some of these shavings back to Chateau. Miss Yenfei? Might I be so bold as to inquire? Um... If you could just confirm for me once more, sir, Mr. Crossel did indeed claim that the ore he brought to your store was, in fact, Smaragdus Jadeite, did he not? Uh, yes, that's right. I still have a record of the job with me, in fact. Um, here. It says quite clearly, one chunk Smaragdus Jadeite, uncut. Then I have no further questions. But could I borrow the processing record and these stone shavings? Of course. But might I ask why you need them? Oh, I have my reasons. Ah, yes. Please sign here on this affidavit. This document shall serve as signed proof that these stone shavings originated from the, uh, ore that Mr. Crossel brought to your store. Please read it carefully. Hmm, yes. I see. I see. <laughs> Forgive me for asking again, Miss Yenfei, but might I know the nature of the incident on this occasion? I wouldn't say there's been an incident, just a minor issue. Thank you, sir. I'll take these with me. With this hard evidence to back us up, Crossel won't dare try to deny what he did! On the contrary, this is far from sufficient to build a case. We need to find something a little more compelling. If you want to make jewelry, you need a professional jewelsmith. Let me think. Jewelry. Jewelry. Hmm. Nope. Aha! Got it! Singsy. She often helps people to find a jewelsmith. Let's go pay her a visit. Well, that was quick. How come you know so many people? 
Because lots of people come to me for legal advice every day. As you know, Liyue Harbor is the city of contracts. And contracts, well, I should say laws, are very important to us. But the amendments made by the Tianchuan to our laws are unnecessarily complicated. How can I put this? It just seems like they're hard to understand and impossible to finish. As such, legal advisors like myself provide quite the popular service indeed. So you help them make sense of the law. But didn't you say that it's hard to understand and impossible to finish? Yes, well, that's no obstacle because I've memorized all the legal codices. You memorized them? What a big-brained queen we have. <laughs> You sound surprised. Knowing the law inside out is a legal advisor's bread and butter, you know? Is this how adept I become so adept at everything? Oh, this has nothing to do with being an adeptus. I just like reading things. Again, with that casual tone. Well, that's that then. Let's go look for Simsi. Let's indeed do that. Here we are. Oh, Miss Yenfei, it's you. Has something happened? Did the client from last time uh, have no further trouble from then on? Yes, of course. I'm just here to ask you a few questions. Has a merchant by the name of Crossel asked you to put him in contact with a jewelsmith recently? Crossel? Yes, I remember him. He's a merchant from Snezhnaya, no? Yeah, he came to me with a chunk of something he called Smaragdus Jadeite. The design of the hairpins that he gave me was quite intricate, so it took me some work to find someone who was up to the job. Eventually, I found an older jewelsmith who made them exactly according to his specifications. This order was on hold for a very long time, and only completed quite recently, which is why I remember it so well. Doesn't seem like there's any evidence to be found here. Miss Inksy, I'd like for you to confirm for me once more. When Mr. Crossel commissioned you to find him a jewel smith, did he or did he not assert that the material he presented to you that day was called Smaragdus Jadeite? Yes, I'm sure of it. The hairpins were made using many expensive materials, and the asking price was quite high, so we had to put this transaction on record with the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Mr. Crossel wasn't very familiar with the necessary procedures, so I filed it on his behalf. I also kept a copy for my own records. See for yourself, the item is called Smaragdus Jadeite Twin Phoenix Pins. The inlaid gemstone is recorded as Smaragdus Jadeite. The document even has the official seal of the Ministry on it. Thank you, Sinksy. Now, could you let me borrow this document? Sure. It isn't serving much purpose here anyway. I take it then that there's been some more trouble? Nothing you need to worry about, just a minor issue. I'll return your document as soon as I'm done with it. Thanks again! Why is everyone's first reaction always to assume someone or something is in trouble? Must be the nature of legal consultancy. Hmm, I believe we have almost all the evidence we need. We just need to make one last trip. Let's go to Boo Boo Pharmacy to speak with Dr. Baiju. Baiju? The weirdo with the snake around his neck? What do you want to speak to him for? Because only he can provide an authoritative statement confirming that Smaragdus Jadeite is harmful to the human body. Once we have this final piece of evidence in our hands, we can wrap this case up. So Dr. Baiju, we go. He's being released soon, isn't he? As a playable character. very exciting for quite a lot of people who've been waiting for him since, well, since this came out. My, my, to what do I owe the pleasure? 
Though I'm afraid that if you're looking for our little Chi Chi, she's out gathering herbs. And if it isn't Miss Yenfei as well, now that's an even rarer honor. What business brings you here, might I inquire? Some charlatans peddling ineffectual medicines again, no doubt? No, no. I'm here this time to ask if you're familiar with Smaragdus Jadeite. Smaragdus Jadeite? Why, yes, there is some information about it included in the sixth commentary on the Seven Mountain Treatises. The Seven Mountain Treatises states that this substance springs forth from stone marrow within the mountains and will bring disaster to any mere mortals who touch it. It is abundant in elemental energy, so if someone without a vision is in contact with it for a prolonged period, best case scenario, they fall ill. Worst case scenario, they'll suffer great changes in personality and their illness will only ever get worse. Huh. Anyway, I'm sure you didn't come all this way just to chit-chat. Knowing you, Yenfei, and given the specific nature of your question, I suppose that you're about to ask me to write an official affidavit attesting to the pharmaceutical peculiarities of Smaragdus Jadeite? That is indeed the case. If you would be so kind, Dr. Baiju. No trouble at all. It's just a single document. Won't take me a moment. I would mention, though, that you are not the only one who's developed a curiosity for Smaragdus Jadeite recently. A Snezhnayan merchant came to ask me about it not long ago. But after I gave him my reply, his expression shifted to one of remarkable disappointment. I wonder, Miss Yenfei, if your pressing business might be related to the Snezhnayan merchant? Ah, you needn't concern yourself about that, Dr. Baiju. Thank you for penning us that document. I'll make sure to compensate you in due course. You're too kind. Take care now. He's got very nice hair. And I like this. That Baiju guy is as weird as ever. <laughs> is it just Paimon, or does it feel like he was fishing for something back there? Dr. Baiju's always been like that. Well, we have the evidence we need. Let's go find Mr. Crossel. Don't worry, I will be knocking out some of these world quests in a bit. Well, not in a bit. You know, soon. We want Crossel. Let's go legally beat him up. Miss Yanfei, have you finished your investigation? I trust you will now be in a position to assess the compensation due. Yes, my investigation is indeed concluded. I can now provide a final figure for the amount payable. Wonderful. Well then, please, could you do the honors, Miss Yanfei? Of course. Ahem, <clears throat> according to the stipulations of the contract. Mr. Crossel, you must pay Mr. Chow ten times the original transaction price in Mora. Sure. Wait, what? M me pay her? Surely there's been some kind of mistake, Miss Yanfei. Not at all. According to my investigations and the material evidence that we've gathered, the substance claimed to be Smaragdus Jadeite that was inlaid within the Smaragdus Jadeite twin phoenix pins that you rented out to Mr. Chow was, in fact, Smaragdus Nephrite. Now, the contract states very clearly that ten times the price shall be paid should the article not be genuine. Accordingly, you are liable for this sum, which is payable to Mr. Chow in Mora. Material evidence? What material evidence? Why, Miss Yanfei, you cannot frame me like this. I spent a huge sum to obtain that Sparagdus Jadeite, and yet you claim that the ore inlaid on the hairpins is somehow fake? I demand to see your evidence. Indeed. Only a testimony from an expert witness involved in the processing of the ore can serve as an authoritative assessment of whether it is genuine. Traveler, please produce the evidence in question. Show the evidence from the Jade Mystery. This is a processing record from the Jade Mystery, along with stone samples and an affidavit signed by the business owner, Chateau. Seriously? Even the boss there couldn't differentiate between Smaragdus Jadeite and Smaragdus Nephrite. How does this prove anything? In any case, Smaragdus Nephrite is the outer layer of Smaragdus Jadeite. 
So I had him cut away the nephrite, he returned the valuable jadeite core to me, and some nephrite samples remain in the store. What am I missing exactly? Th that's an unsubstantiated belief. Well, your claim that my ore is fake is just as unsubstantiated. And we are here to talk about evidence, aren't we? Ugh. Looks like our first piece of evidence didn't convince him at all. Seems like he came prepared. What should we do next? Hard evidence. Something legally binding. We have just the thing. Show him, Traveler. Show the evidence from Min Ming Sin Ju. <laughs> this document proves that my hairpins are the real deal, doesn't it? This is the Ministry's seal, after all. It shows that the ore inlaid on the pins is indeed Smaragdus Jadeite. Our second piece of evidence didn't work either. And this guy's getting more belligerent by the second. Hmm. You know, you could be right. Perhaps the hairpins are the real deal after all. Of course I'm right. All the evidence shown supports my story. Well, hang on a moment now, because I do recall one final piece of evidence that we haven't revealed yet. Traveler, would you do the honors? This shall serve as decisive proof of our case. Show the, de the evidence from Boo Boo Pharmacy. Wh what's this? Smaragdus Jadeite springs forth from Stone Marrow within the mountains and will bring disaster to any mere mortals who touch it. Sustained contact with Smaragdus Jadeite over a prolonged period will, in less serious cases, cause a mild malady, while in serious cases, the patient may suffer a dramatic change of personality and fall seriously ill. Mr. Crossel, were you aware of these peculiar properties of Smaragdus Jadeite? I... I had no idea. No idea, you say? Hmm, I'd guessed as much. But for you to have rented out such a dangerous item... I'm afraid that this falls outside the scope of my work, but within that of the Ministry of Civil Affairs. However, I'm sure that the Ministry will be relatively lenient, considering that, as you say, you were ignorant of the danger you posed. Don't worry, Mr. Crossel. I will make sure that all the evidence presented here will be handed over to the Ministry. I trust that you'll give them your full cooperation in their investigations. What? Wait, wait! I... I knew. Oh, so you knew? Oh, dear, Mr. Crossel. But if you knew of Smaragdus Jadeite's dangerous properties beforehand, why would you... Huh? No, uh, I... <sighs> the hairpins aren't actually... Aren't actually inlaid with genuine Smaragdus Jadeite? Is that what you were about to say? You do understand, Mr. Crossel, that this means that you will have to pay Mr. Chow ten times the original price in Mora? Mr. Crossel, your answer, please. My client and I are waiting. I... 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 Yamp, he's seriously intimidating right now. It's like she's a different person. Again, that's legal consultancy for you. I admit it. I confess. The ore I had in laid on those hairpins was... was Maragdus Nephrite. B but I'm a victim in all of this, too. I invested a great deal of time and money into acquiring that small amount of Smaragdus Jadeite in the hopes of turning it into a piece of jewelry that would fetch a fine price. But after receiving it and carrying it around for a few days, I started to feel extreme discomfort. I couldn't sleep a wink or eat a single bite. I... I was in a constant state of agitation, too. I went to Boo Boo Pharmacy to get myself checked out only to discover that this sort of stone cannot be worn as jewelry. But how could I let all that money go to waste? That's why I had another pair of hairpins made from Smaragdus Nephrite, which is almost indistinguishable from Smaragdus Jadeite. I kept the real Smaragdus Jadeite in a specially made box. I daren't touch it again. I was worried that someone would see through it, which is why I only dared to rent them out, not sell them. And then to top it all off, Zhi Chao lost the hairpins after I rented them out to her. So why did you charge Zhi Chao such an extortionate rental price? Exactly! If they weren't the real deal, why'd you make her pay so much? Hmm? I... I didn't want to either. But when I purchased that Smaragdus Jadeite, some of my business partners found out. I knew they'd be watching closely to see how much I could make off it. If word got out that I sold a pair of fake hairpins, then... My days in this line of business would be over. All right, let's cut the appeals phase right there. I fail to see what bearing any of this has on your transaction with my client. 
According to the contract, you must pay Mr. Chow ten times the original price in Mora, and that is final. Ten... ten times? Crozo looks like he could faint any second! As for me, according to my contract with Mr. Chow, 20% of that sum will go to me. 20%? That's as much as I spent on that Smaragdus Jadeite! Maybe you should get into the legal industry then, bud. Um, there's no need. It's fine. You don't have to pay me that much, Mora. Even if the Smaragdus Jadeite on those hairpins was fake, I still bear responsibility for losing them. Legally or not, I think I owe some compensation for that. Uh, Ms. Juchow, you... However, Mr. Crossel, since you have no use for that chunk of Smaragdus Jadeite, why don't you give it to me instead? I'll consider us even. What? But I... All right, then. This cursed rock's brought me enough grief as it is. Miss Yunfei, I'll turn this Smaragdus Jadeite over to you. I trust that it will suffice as remuneration? Well, um, that's not quite how the rules say this should go. But whatever, it'll do. Thanks so much for your help this time, Miss Yunfei. When you have the time, I'll be sure to visit and express my thanks more appropriately. Oh, come on. No need to stand on ceremony. Now, if I may confirm this again, Mr. Chow, have you and Mr. Crossel come to an understanding? Hmm? Well, yes, I believe we have. Well then, that's good. Mr. Crossel, it seems that my client has no further claims against you. Is... is that so? That's good. That's good. Actually, Mr. Crossel, I'd like to talk business for a second, if I may. I could see from the hairpins you produce that you're very skilled in jewelry design. My family, on the other hand, works in the ore business, and we have a fair stock of fine ores. If we could join forces, your jewelry designs and our choice ores, I think we could do some fine business between us. I, uh, let me think for a moment. He's a good person. Well, that's that. And we've got the Smaragdus Jadeite that Granny wants, too. All's well that ends well, eh? Yes, though there are some twists and turns along the way. Exactly. Usually when someone tells us they've lost something, we end up searching all over the place for it. But this time, you managed to solve the problem with just a big stack of documents. <laughs> Even though the solution didn't involve actually finding the hairpins. The right solution depends on your perspective on the problem. The objective of my client, Mr. Chow, was to reduce her liability to pay compensation. So, rather than looking high and low for some hairpins, proving that the rented item was nowhere near worth what the vendor had claimed it to be was the more efficient solution. Can't say I've ever met an Adeptus like you before. An Adeptus? Speaking of, you took part in that battle, didn't you? In which case, you would have heard what Granny said. Liyue Harbor is now a city ruled by humans. The title of Adeptus means precious little to me compared to my job as a legal advisor. In any case, don't you think that the Liyue Harbor of today needs legal consultancy far more than it needs Adeptal powers? Paimon can think of someone who would definitely disagree with your reasoning. I think there is more than just reason involved here, Paimon. Well, since we got what we came for, it's time to pay Granny a visit. I bet she's been on tenterhooks for a while now. Time to go back to Granny. Should we be holding this Jadeite? Maybe because of our elemental powers we can withstand it for longer? Uh. Do we have a... Yeah, we do. Better hurry before we start getting sick. Or undergoing a dramatic change of personality. <sighs> ah, you've returned. How did it go? Were you able to find the Smaragdus Jadeite? We 
were, thanks to Yanfe. Good, good. Then we have all the materials we need. Well, if we're all set, Granny, I'll get going now. Got a ton of clients waiting for me back at the office. Oh, you. All right, then. Go see to your business. Granny should be able to handle the rest. I'm off, then. Bye! Oh, yes, Traveler. Make sure you don't lose the business card I gave you. I've been looking into the laws of other nations as well. If you should ever bump into any trouble with the law, come find me directly. Regulars get discounts, too. Come now, child. Are you leaving or are you not? If you have no wish to leave, perhaps you'd like to help me clean my teapot, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving! I'm leaving! <sighs> that child... Goodness knows where she learned to be so rambunctious. Her father was hardly so riotous or fond of talking nonsense back in the day when he stood beside Rex Lapis. A truly unique adeptus. Ah, indeed she is. Liyue has changed, and the adepti must also learn to change. Yan Fei might be overly garrulous, but she is also the most intimately acquainted with the city among us all. Ah, uh, Liyue is not the same place I once knew. Granny. All right, then. Let us speak of this no more. Back on topic. I believe that I still owe you a little gift. Oh, Paimon's so excited! How is it made? And how long does it take? <laughs> it is but a single teapot. It shan't take long at all. Just wait here for a moment. <laughs> there we go. This serenity pot is all yours now. Hold it firmly. If you were to drop it, oh <laughs> goodness, who knows what might happen. Take these blueprints with you as well. You'll need them if you wish to make your teapot a little more lively inside. Thanks, Granny. Wait a minute, Granny! How exactly are we supposed to use this teapot? Oh, you needn't worry about that. I've already arranged for a certain little helper to await you within this teapot. She will explain everything you need to know about it. Okay. Let's go in, shall we? Ooh. I like this one the best. Dig a burrow to live in for now, I guess. Hey! There's a perfectly good house right over there! Why should Paimon have to live in a hole in the ground? Still, why is it so empty here apart from that house? Oh, wait a second. What is that? Well, it seems that we have a visitor. It's a huge visitor! Excuse me, I am not a finch. I am a teapot spirit, and you may call me... Um, hang on a moment. What am I supposed to be called again? Oh, call me... I suppose you may call me... Tubby. Send her the pot. So you're the little helper Madam Ping mentioned? Madam Ping? Oh, you must mean Ping. Yes, she did summon me here. She told me much about you. 
You may leave all matters regarding the upkeep of this realm to me. Your journey may be far from over. But at least this way, you will not want for a comfortable place to sleep each night. So what's a teapot spirit exactly? Though it is the Adepti who create realms such as this, they generally do not have the time of day to attend to the banal matter of their maintenance. Thus, we teapot spirits were created to help guard their realms and manage their affairs. You may consider me a butler, if you will. Now, allow me to explain this realm to you. Have you any blueprints on you? Specifically, blueprints with beautiful rooms, chairs, and the like. As long as you have a blueprint, you can refashion this realm however you please. Blueprints? Oh, that's right! Granny handed us some when she gave us the teapot, didn't she? Let's take them out and have a look. Yes, these are the blueprints I'm talking about. Go on, open them up. Just commit the image of the objects to memory and prepare the necessary materials. Then simply release the thought from your mind and the object in the blueprint shall appear within this teapot. Wow, is that all it takes? Then we could build a whole city inside, couldn't we? Hmm, I doubt it. A golden-eyed adeptus explained this to me at some point in the past. He said that even though subspace creation is a product of adeptal power, even that has its limits. This world is not a true one, after all. It provides merely a moment of brief respite from the mortal realm, not a means of escaping it entirely. A golden-eyed adeptus? Paimon wonders, who could that be? I hardly remember myself. What's more, I have never seen that Adeptus again since. Oh, very strange. Well, let's not dwell on that. Have a look around. Best you get accustomed to this realm. If there's anything you would like to ask, just look for me. <laughs> Yes, I will not be mean. I'm gonna put this right next to the house. See? You arrived quickly. Good, good. What's up? I asked you to come here so I could give you a little gift. I do not know if I told you before, but these abodes are private spaces created by the Adepti for themselves. Most Adepti will use certain methods to seal their abode away from the rest of the world to ensure its purity and avoid being disturbed. Afterward, Adepti would create a realm dispatch for those they wished to invite into their abode. This realm dispatch bears signatures of the abode's adeptal energy, and that of the adeptus themselves. As such, anyone who has this dispatch can enter or exit the abode freely. Before, this abode was in an incomplete, embryonic state. Those whom you invited into it would only have been able to exit and enter together with you, rather than remain for long periods. But now, well, take this realm dispatch that I've created for you and hold it in your hand, tightly now. What should I do next? Don't worry. You need only hold this dispatch and it will draw some of your energy out and into it. Ah yes. I heard Ping mention that you have made friends in a great many places. As such, I suspect that were we to distribute one dispatch to each one of them, we would be here making dispatches for a long time. As such, I have made some modifications to this dispatch. All you need to do is tap the palm of the person you'd like to invite lightly with the dispatch, and your energy signature will remain on them, allowing them to enter and leave your realm with ease. Ah, it's almost like marking, isn't it? Huh? Well, sort of. 
Why did you have to put it so weirdly? <laughs> Called out by Tubby. Ahem, <clears throat> well. Here is the Realm Dispatch. Go forth and invite whoever you wish. It seems that this place shall become lively quite soon. Neat. Maybe you are not used to the place at the moment, but once you've materialized enough rooms and furniture through subspace creation, it will feel just like home. gonna make 50 fabric and then I guess like 10 of each die just for now Sand, fair wood, iron wood. Just need like five. I guess I'll use one of those for now. I'll just make each one of these. And finally, I won't put anything out yet. I'll figure that out another time. How close are we to the next trust rank? Okay. Can I afford anything? I guess I could get a, a furniture. Put a restaurant sign. But I'll, I'll just let that one go. If you ever have any qu Thank you. Just accept these rewards. Okay, now I have a lot of <laughs> a lot of furniture. Yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. Ah. Time to hop back to Leo. It's in Chingso Village. I think it's this waypoint. Now 
we're gonna finish the quest that we accidentally started earlier. So let's go to see Chang the Knight and to see Sing Shou. Heavens are smiting me. Smiting me to smithereens. Excuse me, are you Chang the Ninth? Uh-huh. And what do you want? Come on, spit it out. We've heard you've got tons of old books lying around, and we want to borrow the Leo and volume of the Tevat Travel Guide. Huh. Don't get me started on the topic of my books. After the chasm was sealed off, the family mining business started going south. Then the Fatui started working to sabotage me. To pay off my debts, I had no choice but to pawn off my beloved book collection. Every last book. Do you have any idea what that means? You're sad you've got nothing to read now? Wrong. That was my life's work. I devoted my entire life to curating, collecting, caring for them. And now they're gone. Gone, I tell you. <sighs> It's useless ranting and raving at you like this. All I can do is try to save enough Mora to buy them back. Unless you have other business here, I'm done talking to you. Goodbye. Off you go. Go on, go. Please tell me that you didn't pawn Volume 6 of Legend of the Shattered Halberd. Legend of the Shattered Halberd? <laughs> there is a title I haven't heard in a long time. You have good taste, my boy. What? But we don't? That work was an epic defining masterpiece. Granted, it was almost unknown at the time it was published, but over time it was the work that came to define the genre of martial arts novels and sparked a plethora of imitation works. Barely any copies of the first edition were ever printed. The later edition inexplicably went out of print, almost as soon as it was released. A shame given what it allegedly added to the original story. Yes, that's right. How did I forget? The original edition sixth volume of that work is, is so rare, <laughs> I could never bring myself to pawn it no matter how much I needed the money. <laughs> that was very terrible timing. Look at our leg. <laughs> you mean, you mean you still have it? These two nerds carrying on their conversation, not even asking if I'm okay when I just got struck by lightning. It's coming for you next, buddy. <laughs> yes. It is my one and only remaining treasure. Hey, Chang. You've got some nerve keeping me and my boss waiting like this. I need an answer. Will you sell the Corlapis or not? I can't... I can't take this. <laughs> Look at me just <laughs> leaning back. Oh my goodness. Just minding my business. I'm not even here. I'm sure you don't need me to remind you that if you mess with Gentry Mautsai, you're messing with the Fatui. Oh, you again. But you know I can't afford to give a 70% discount on the price. I'd never be able to buy my collection back. That's your business. The question is, do you want your books, or do you want food on your plate? Perhaps you'd like to take your books with you to an early grave. Jesus. <sighs> you... <sighs> Whoa there, friend. Come on. This gentleman is either willing to make a deal or he's not. You can't force him to sell against his will. 
Just who do you think you are? Keep your nose out of other people's business. My liege, I am but one who comes to the aid of this gentleman in his moment of need. I am Tsingcho, disciple of the Guhua clan. Kind of annoying, my buddy. <laughs> Guhua clan? Did you hear this clown? He thinks he's a Guhua master in this day and age. <laughs> Oh, there was me thinking the last granddads of Guhua had keeled over and died by now. <laughs> Who were you supposed to be then, huh? Some sort of Guhua messiah? Did I just get hit again? Justice is blind to our backgrounds, my friend. That just makes me someone trying to do the right thing. But you? The weasel who does the tiger's bidding may be less powerful than his master, but he is no less guilty. Get a load of this guy. <laughs> Just you wait. You'll be sorry you crossed me. And you, Chang? You're selling that core lapis whether you like it or not. A dick. <sighs> oh, how the wolves prey upon the fallen tiger. My days are numbered. So, just to come back to what we were talking about earlier, could I get a yay or nay about borrowing that book? Two words. Situational awareness. He and Paimon have the same one-track mind. Oh, what does it matter now? I can't expect anybody to care about me anymore. But since you did stick up for me, please, just take this book and... Leave me in peace. Three long years I have waited for this day. Words cannot express my gratitude. I, Xingqiu, vow to repay this great act of generosity. All right, give it a rest. Just bring it back when you're finished. Sorry, but I'm not about to put my hopes in some self-professed Guhua disciple. Hey, where are you going? We Still got a job to do over here. Uh, ooh, just is this an answer from this world? Pick up that achievement. Multiple achievements. I know he's powerful and he's very strong. I like Bennett. I just find him kind of annoying. So, you like reading, huh? Mr. Five Second Hero? Ho oh, ho, amazing! I never saw that coming. Hello? Shincho? Anybody in there? No wonder this book is so highly sought after. <sighs> guy back at Chang the Ninth was pretty bossy. How can they bully poor old Chang the Ninth like this? Forcing him to sell his ore for dirt cheap? It's daylight robbery, pure and simple. So I guess we're scrapping Operation Leo, a travel guide. Why do you give up on your book search so lightly? Oh, so now you can hear what we're saying. The reason I borrowed this book is that it would be a real pity if Chang the Ninth ended up having to pawn it. And I meant every word I said to Cheng the Ninth. I will return his act of kindness. It is the just thing to do. I will be custodian of this book, and I will also help find a way to buy back the rest of his collection. You already have a plan, don't you? Of course I do. An initial plan, anyway. I still need to work out the details. Give me a second to reflect. It shan't take but a moment. You're still here? 
What is this, a game to you? You think no one's really gonna get hurt? <laughs> I gotta hand it to the goofball clan. What you lack in numbers and talent, you make up for in guts. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say goofball clan? I meant Guhua clan. <laughs> That's what you goofballs call it, right? <laughs> it's like an American high school bully from films. I, I can't take this. <laughs> There's a saying that goes, the insect that shakes the oak tree ludicrously overestimates its ability. Uh, quit quoting proverbs at me, you buffoon. Please leave this place. I will not tolerate an attempt to coerce an honest traitor, especially when the one you seek to threaten is one to whom I owe a debt of gratitude. <sighs> it's cute that you want to stick your neck out for Chang and all. But you picked the wrong time, you little punk. I brought the Fatui to back me up. A whole army of you and your little Guhua buddies wouldn't be able to help you now. I may be young, my liege, but the path I have chosen makes me no stranger to conflict. Why should I cower in the face of evil? Oh, great speech. <laughs> but now it's time for you to learn your lesson. Outlines your fate. The more, the merrier. You've been a naughty boy. <laughs> Let me amuse myself a little. <laughs> Blink. The more, the no, my sword. and I'll be gentle. Rain cutter! Scatter! Germinate! I thought that was just a regular pendant you were wearing, not a vision! Well then you're a dumbass. You won this round, but you better watch your back! This isn't over! Would it be too much to hope they've learned their lesson? So you're a vision bearer. Yes, though I try to avoid using it. I dislike the unfair advantage it gives me against my opponents. Though I long to restore Guhua to its former glory, it is no easy task. They've gone for now, but they'll be back looking to cause more trouble before long. I'll see to it that no harm comes to those who show me kindness. There is a just and unjust way to do business. And I will ensure the matter is resolved satisfactorily. It's not like the Fatui to pick sides in a business dispute. But the confident demeanor of their errand boy suggests there is substance to his words. There must be a deeper level of collusion at work here. He mentioned Gentry Maotai. I know this name. He has a stately residence in Liyue Harbor. Maybe the two of you could go and investigate. That idea works, but what are you gonna do? Me? I have other things to look into. Let me see. Let us meet at Yujing Terrace in Liwa Harbor in a bit. You really have stuff to do? Are you sure you're not just using us as your errand runners? Wow, so that's how that turned out. This whole passage is just extraordinary. Ugh, this guy is so annoying! Paimon just wants to slap him right in his stupid face! Thus, let's help Chang the Ninth. Hmm. Fine. But, as per tradition, Paimon gets to pick an ugly nickname for him. From now on, he shall be known as... Guhua Geek! You go see first. No need to wait for me. One more page and I'll go and stretch my legs. Just one last page. That was honestly worse than, um, Goofball Clan. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not gonna run. Ah! <laughs> 
Yes, nice. Excellent. Who goes there? A Mondstadt merchant here for a meeting with Gentry Mautzai. Really? He didn't mention anything about a meeting. The Master's dealing with some urgent business today. All prior appointments have been cancelled. Urgent business? What is it? <sighs> the Master's been working on a major business deal recently. He left early this morning to meet with a VIP client. I'm sorry. The Master is stressed that we must not disclose that information to just anyone. Just anyone? You saying that we are not his VIP client? Uh, no. I, I I mean, yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> I, I, I meant no offense. P please, believe me. Would you like to explain these extra fees you are incurring to your boss, or shall I? I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Master is currently in business negotiations at Shinya Kiosk. I, I beg for your mercy, please. My master will show me no leniency if he finds out. Well, my master has much more important things to do than talking to rude guards like you. Luckily for you, your bad attitude will be the last thing on our minds when my master's busy negotiating a big business deal with your boss. Thank you, thank you. May your business forever be blessed by the Lord of Geo. <laughs> that was easy. Nice work! Paimon never knew you were such a tough negotiator. You did great, too. <laughs> Paimon loves compliments and all, but treating Paimon to some tasty snacks would show that you really mean it. Such an opportunist. Anyway, seems like the VIP client in question must be one of the Fatui. This could work in our favor. In that case, let's get ourselves over to the Shinyue Kiosk. Seems business is booming at the Shinua kiosk. No one should notice if we blend in there. But either way, if we want to know what kind of shady business they're up to, we better be careful. A bit more. I understand. I do. Please do not worry. You have my word that the order will be completed as promised. Hmm. The subordinate I sent was not quite so optimistic in his appraisal. Is somebody being uncooperative? Uh, we just ran into a minor procurement problem, is all. We haven't managed to purchase the Core Lapis yet. But it's nothing for you to worry about. If Chang the Ninth won't sell, I can buy from someone else. That would be most ideal. I remind you again that the Fatui care only about the result. We are willing to lend a certain degree of support to this transaction. But if it is not completed in time, you may suddenly find our goodwill comes at a price you cannot afford. I understand. I am indebted to you for your protection. You know I would not dream of disappointing you, don't you? We shall see when the time comes. <laughs> Darn that old man, Chang. So, Mr. Gentry Mozai is colluding with the Fatui. Who knows if Gula Geek has made any progress? Should we go tell him? Suppose we'd better head.
you had other things to look into, as if you're some sort of man of mystery. When actually, all you meant was you wanted somewhere new to park your backside while you read your book. We know what Gentry Mouth is up to now. I see. I guessed as much. Did you really guess, or are you just saying that to sound clever? The course of action we must take is now clear. To start with, please deliver this letter to the Feiyun Commerce Guild. They will know what to do. My liege, for reasons that I cannot explain, I will be unable to join you. Is he reading, huh? There is no need for you to read the contents of the letter. When the time comes... Ugh. This writing is super hard to read. Python can't make heads or tails of it. Secret text that needs a cipher, perhaps? Uh... Hence why I said there is no need for you to read it. The Feiyun Commerce Guild will have someone who can understand it. But why would you want to get them involved? They're one of the big wig commerce guilds in Liyue. Why would they want to help us? What is the Feiyun Commerce Guild? Since we got to Liyue, Paimon keeps hearing people mention it. Seems they oversee a lot of business that goes on around here. Having such big backing would be great and all, but are you sure they'd want to help? No need to worry about that. From what I know, they share my sense of chivalry. Once they have read the carefully reasoned and passionately argued case I put forth in this letter, they will certainly be moved to action. How can you be sure? Gentry Moutsai must be taught a lesson he will never forget. This is something we cannot do on our own. Also, I do not wish for anyone else to know of my involvement in this. Why not? You're only doing this to try and help chain the ninth, right? To silently disappear at the matter's conclusion, concealing one's name and contribution. This is the chivalrous thing to do. To savor the memory is ample reward. So pretentious. Each droplet of kindness I receive, I am duty-bound to repay with the welling spring of gratitude. I seek neither praise nor reward. That sounds very lovely. But be honest, you just want them to do it so you can carry on reading your book, don't you? Thank you in advance for delivering this letter to the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Someone from the guild should be able to receive you near Lioli Pavilion. Hey! Stop ignoring Paimon! Us, we come bearing news of a matter requiring your assistance. Uh, it's all in this letter. Why are you suddenly talking like Tsingchu? A letter? Oh, I see. This again. Again? Oh, don't mind me. I was just speculating. Let me give this a read. Can we actually read this thing? Is it even written in the common tongue? Hmm, yes. The script is inimitable by the uninitiated. Honored guests, you must both be wary from your long journey. Please allow the Feiyun Commerce Guild to be your host for tonight. Wait, what? Please rest assured that the matter written about has been duly received. We just need some time to prepare. Please take a seat here in Leo Lee Pavilion, where you may enjoy some light refreshments while taking in the ocean view. Consider it a small token of our esteem. Yay! Tasty snacks! They're giving us the VIP treatment! Of course. We treat visitors with the utmost respect here at the Feiyun Commerce Guild. When honored guests grace us with their presence, far be it from us to shirk our duty to them. Please, this way. Don't mind if I do. And Paimon thought we'd get kicked out or turned away at the door. Paimon didn't think Guhua Geek had so much clout. Thank you for your patience. With the amount of wealth and power Gentry Mountsai has, it will take more than a slap on the wrist to get through to him. For him to correct the error of his ways, 
he must feel for himself the same suffering he has inflicted on Chang the Ninth. Since Gentry Maltsai's business has to do with Core Lapis, we simply need to buy up all the stock there is in Liu. That will put him in a rather sticky situation. Deprived of the necessary raw materials, even the best craftsperson in Tevat would be unable to make their product. Great idea! That'll be sure to mess things up between him and the Fatui. But Liu is huge! Is it really possible to buy up every last bit of Core Lapis in the harbor? With the timescale we are on, it is indeed a challenge. Hence, as stated in the letter, we must ask for your further cooperation in the matter. First, there are a number of vendors in the city you will need to buy from. I've marked their respective locations on your map. There is also some unsold Core Lapis at the Chasm. You will need to purchase that too. Finally, there is Chang the Ninth's batch. Alrighty, so three sellers in the city, another one at the Chasm, and then Chang the Ninth. Roger that! Of course. We are not expecting you to cover the costs. Wow! So many Mora! With cash like this, Paimon could rent out Leoli Pavilion and eat there for a whole month! The Fade and Commerce Guild is certainly generous with its resources. <laughs> well, this is not the first time we've had to do something like this. It's just par for the course now. All you need to do is strike a deal. The Feiyun Commerce Guild will handle the transportation and other trifling matters. Once you have purchased all the Core Lapis, please proceed to the Feiyun Commerce Guild's warehouse, where you can see the rest of the plan unfold. Gotta hand it to Guhua Geek. This is some seriously solid work for a guy who lives in a fantasy world. Let's do this in the order the guy said. First the sellers in the city, then the chasm, and then last but not least, Chang the Ninth. Let's go buy out the Core Lapis. Okay. We'll go to this place first. Anything I can do for you? I'll take all your core lapis. Y you want all my core lapis? Uh, I've already agreed to several orders. That said, none are in writing. The buyers are being incredibly indecisive. And let the Feiyun Commerce Guild take it off your hands. Oh, it's for the Feiyun Commerce Guild? Hmm, seems business trends are about to change in Liyue. Oh, uh... <laughs> Nothing. Just talking to myself. Come, let us sign a contract. Don't worry about my prior client. He hadn't made any down payments or anything. Quite common in the industry. Thank you for your patronage. We hope the Feiyun Commerce Guild will continue to do business with us. <laughs> uh, Looks like it's helpful having a reputable source behind us. Good day, my friend. My apologies, but I'm out of stock at the moment. Please try again next time. Are you out of Core Lapis too? Oh, I thought you were here to purchase Snezhnaya products. No, that I still have, although I ship it all to factories in Snezhnaya. I don't do retail. Too much hassle, not enough return. Sorry. So you're rejecting the Feiyun Commerce Guild's business? What? Uh, no, 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 no. Give me a second to think. Um... Uh, all right, I'll do it. Just need you to sign for it. Clearly no shortage of cash flow in Liu. And finally, we jump off. <sighs> oh, it's him. Oi, shh, keep your voice down. I'll take all your call up. All of it? Though my business may not seem so big, I should warn you that I can get what you need, both legitimately and not so legitimately. <laughs> Best you give me an actual number. All of it would be far more than you actually want. 
Congrats for the Fayun Commerce Guild. Fe Fayun Commerce Guild? Well, why didn't you say so? If it's for the Fayun Commerce Guild, then sign on the dotted line, and I'll start getting things in order right away. Okay, hey, off we go to the chasm. Just pop a quick marker down. You know the drill by now. there. Are you in charge of the core lapis here? Aha! Finally! I thought you might come. I hear the Feiyun Commerce Guild has been buying up all the core lapis stock in Leo Harbor. Do they have phones in this? Like, how do people communicate? Because usually we send letters. Like, how did he hear so fast? It took me in-game time probably a couple hours. And I can teleport. No one else can do that. As it happens, I do have a batch of core lapis that hasn't been shipped yet. It's all yours, if you name the right price. I have a bad feeling about this. The original buyer's price was already quite high, so... Hmm. The best I can do is... 7 million mora. Are you serious? We spent less than 2 million mora on the rest of Leo's stuff put together! I'm afraid it has to go to the highest bidder. I'm breaching an existing agreement by selling to you, so it has to be worth my while. It's poor form to just raise the price without good grounds. Uh, look, you have your problems to deal with and I have mine. You can take it or leave it, so if you're not buying, please leave me alone. All right, all right, we'll pay, even if it is a ridiculous price. When we get back, we'll just have to tell the guild that we'll sell to this gentleman at four times the normal price in the future. Wait, surely there's no need for that. Maybe you should think twice before affronting the Fey and Commerce Guild. Please, don't do this. It's not even your money. Why be so frugal with it? It might be the Guild's money, but we'll have a tough time explaining to our boss why we spent so much in one go. If he asks, all we can do is mention your name and say you gouged us over the price. I... I understand. I'm sorry, please. I don't want any trouble with the guild. There's just one other thing, though. There's been an issue with the delivery of this batch. Uh, several carts were ambushed by hilly churls. Of course they were. I don't know where exactly, but if I can't retrieve the goods, I can't sell them to you either. Yet you were perfectly willing to pretend to sell them to us. For a stupid price. So... Maybe you could go and look for the carts? There should be five of them in total. If you can find them all and tell me where they are, I'll sign the contract right away. Market price? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I mean, I do hope to carry on doing business in Lier in the future. That's that, then. Well, no time to lose. Come on!
I'm just gonna put a marker down because I don't want to hog this up with exploring as well. Even if it'd be like a two minute climb. <laughs> it's the principle. Tend to skip that quickly. I usually try not to skip dialogue in this one, but uh, it's habit. Oh, yeah, we found it. Check. Make a note of the location. We'll send the Fayum Commerce Guild to collect it later. Okay, we've got two. I think that one with uh, with Hilly Gels next to it is gonna be one as well. Right. Yeah. Another one down. That's three. of Corlap is here. Quick, make a note of the location. And there's a bunch of hilly chills. You've been floating along happy as a clam. I'm the one who's been doing all the work here. Here, we've made a note of the cart's locations, all five of them. Can you sell us the core lapis now? Oh, wonderful. Thank you both. Yes, let's make this official. I also hope you could... Put in a good word with your boss for me? That's a very, very audacious request. Given you tried to scam us with goods you didn't even know where they were. I mean, I'm here to make friends. And I'm all for being nice to you if you're gonna be good in the future. But if you're just gonna scam people again? Mm -mm. Done and dusted! Yeah! Nice work back there, Paimon. We make a great team, don't we? Now for the final stop on our core lapis crawl. To Chain the Ninth's place! Make a marker here as well. It's honestly the perfect solution really because we get to buy all of his stock and not a 70% reduction so then he can buy his books back and stop being depressed and also we stop the Fatui from getting loads of cool lapis for whatever reason they have Just who I was hoping to see. I was just thinking to myself, Gentry Mount Size Thugs have been mysteriously absent for a while now. You wouldn't know anything about that, 
would you? Oh, don't worry. You won't be hearing from them again. Oh? What, what happened? Not only that, but we'd like to purchase your Corlapis. Huh? Oh, oh, I see now. You're, you're in this trade too. So you're trying to beat him to the post, eh? Appearances can be deceiving, that's for sure. But I don't care who you are. A discount of 70% is simply impossible. The maximum I can do is 40% off, and even then I'm, I'm only breaking even. No need. We'll take it at the market rate. Y you mean you're not trying to force the price down? Wh what's, what's going on? Have I died and gone to heaven? I can't believe it. I will make a profit on this batch after all. But gentry mount-sized thugs could still come back after I've sold it. If Paimon told you they're not gonna bother you again, then you'd better believe they're not gonna bother you again. Just trust me. Huh. Okay, then. My situation can hardly get worse from here in any case. But tell me, what on earth do you plan to do with so much core lapis? Actually, it's for a commission. Can't go into too much detail. We'll send someone to collect the goods later. Thank you. Thank you a million times over. I really don't know what to say. Don't thank us yet. Wait till we've finished, at least. Good people always get what's coming to them in the end. And so will the nasty people. Anyway, let's get going, because apparently we have a show to watch at the Feiyun Commerce Guild's warehouse. I get the feeling that the show is going to be less of a show and more of a we get involved, have to fix things. You know the drill. It's roughly there, I think. Oh. Literally perfect. I am so talented. <laughs> Let's go. Welcome. The final act in this drama would not be complete without you two here as audience. You better believe it! We're the ones who've been doing all the work! What exactly have you been doing all this time? Uh, well, naturally, I used the time to immerse myself completely in Legend of the Shattered Halberd. I managed to finish the book off, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Divine Halberd and Ominous Sword, Mir and Wei Yang, the way the story develops across the first five volumes. Nothing short of exemplary. But the sixth volume? Oh, words fail me. How blessed we are to have such an author grace our world with such works. And this is related to Gentry Meltsai, how? It's not. But when something surpasses expectations to such a degree, one must show one's appreciation. Is the ending of the book good? It was rather good. Thanks. I only hope that as our plan reaches its denouement, it too will live up to its expectations. Why does Paimon have to be the only one who doesn't get what's going on? No fair! Uh, so go on then, tell me, what are we doing here? And what's this big dramatic showdown thing that's supposed to happen? Think about it. Gentry Maltzai goes searching for Core Lapis all over Liyue Harbor, and he doesn't find a single piece. He panics. Without the goods, he can't fulfill his contract. And if he can't fulfill his contract, he can't stay in good standing with the Fatui. He hears a rumor that the Feiyun Commerce Guild is the culprit. Panic turns to disbelief. Jinshi Maotsai is a hugely powerful figure in the business world. Never has anyone dared to target him like this. So regardless of whether it is revenge or a swift resolution that he seeks, he is certain to... So it was you! You were the ones sticking your necks out for Chang the Ninth! Speak of the devil. 
I went everywhere trying to find someone selling core lapis before I realized the Theyum Commerce Guild had been on an acquisition spree. Core lapis is hardly a rare mineral, and yet suddenly the stocks dry up, just like that. Explain yourselves. What is the meaning of this persecution? We are not persecuting you, but protecting another, one to whom I am indebted. Upon witnessing an injustice, it is a perfectly normal response to rush to the aid of he who has been wronged. Was it not one of your own men who said, this isn't over? <clears throat> you clearly don't know what's good for you. I won't beat around the bush. Master, if you please, seize their Corlapis! Rain outlines your fate. Propagate! Spark things up a little. Impressive. You are no commoners. <sighs> to continue this fight would be to incur greater losses than I can accept. Their strength is almost spent. Finish them off. The core lapis is almost within our grasp. Might I remind you that the Fatui's relationship with you extends to business matters only? I did not lend you my men to have them stir up trouble at your beck and call. W w what are you saying? Master, everything I did, I did with only one thing in mind. To complete the order! Then figure it out by yourself. D don't go. Wait. Master, wait! My lord, what are you doing here? Are you hurt? Thanks to this valiant young woman, I am unscathed. My lord? My lord? You? You are the heir of the Feiyun Commerce Guild? Indeed, my liege. I am Xing Cho, disciple of the Guhua clan and second son of the Feiyun Commerce Guild manager, and I make no secret of it. Drats! I've been played like a fiddle. Gentry Maozai. Coercion and intimidation are hardly the attributes of a respectable businessman. The problems that your business practices have created, I have sought to resolve through mine. I shudder to think what the Fatui will do with you if you fail to provide their core lapis. You meddling swine! Well, go on. Tell me, what will you sell it for? Since you asked Chang the Ninth for a discount of 70%, Let's fight fire with fire, shall we? Three times the market rate sounds fair, no? How dare you subject me to such viciousness? This is a malicious and calculated attempt to run me into the ground. Deep breaths now. This is a simple decision. Will you buy or not? I... I, I <clears throat> fine. Have it your way. I'll find the money somehow. Happy now? On behalf of the Feiyun Commerce Guild, I thank you for your business, and hope you will continue to do business with us in future. You? Funny-speaking, book-reading, guhua-geeking, Cho are the heir of the Feiyun Commerce Guild? So that massive stash of Mora you let us burn through in a day, that was from your private vault? T'was but a paltry sum. 
I got to make a very sound investment while putting Gentry Maltzai in his place. A classic two birds, one stone situation. Don't you rich kids take calligraphy classes from a young age? <laughs> very droll. My family can always tell me from my handwriting. It's certainly one of my distinguishing features. Yikes! Paimon's been calling you Guhua Geek this whole time! Paimon read in one of these martial artist novels that when rich heirs like you get angry at someone, you have their arms and legs chopped off! <sighs> Paimon's toast! And sorry, very sorry! Please don't hurt Paimon! Calm down. Since you can fly, you hardly need your legs anyway. Save me! Save me! This is not a drill! Repeat! This is not a drill! I'm so obviously joking. Jokes aside, I have the two of you to thank for this successful resolution. Really, you were a huge help. Meanwhile, Legend of the Shattered Halberd was positively riveting. Much obliged if you could return it to Chang the Ninth for me. You're making us run yet another errand? I did nothing, and hence deserve none of his gratitude. The two of you, meanwhile, those strangers to the circumstances, stepped in and saved the day. To have made such valiant and chivalrous friends is more than enough for me, my liege. My lord, uh, forgive the intrusion. It's about your father. Please inform my father thusly. I have averted a disaster and earned a sizable sum of money in the process. Might this meritorious act compensate for my prior transgressions and earn me a few more days of freedom, perchance? Legend of the Shattered Halberd speaks of a domain that I should very much like to investigate. For all your clever long words, the fact is you're just a lazy bones who doesn't want to work. <laughs> what if I told you that a reward awaits you at Cheng the Ninth's palace and not just his gratitude? A reward? Hmm. Well, that sweetens the deal somewhat. Ah, uh, it seems whatever I say, there's no persuading you to stay. Why didn't you tell us Sing Cho was the Feiyun Ath? Oh, I didn't realize you weren't aware. Thank you in advance for returning the book for me. I will take my leave now. May we meet again, fellow merchants. Off we go, back to Chingsa Village. Back to Chang the Ninth. Finally, you're back. This morning, the pawnbroker showed up and gave me back my entire collection. I'm positive that you must have been behind this once again. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm a bit torn on this one, because Singsha doesn't want credit. No big deal. Happy to help. Please don't say that. You have no idea how much this means to me. The Chang family was a prestigious household in Liyue back in the day. Unfortunately, after I took over the family's affairs as heir, a series of business setbacks devoured our fortune. Since then, I've saved for years, hoping to restore the house to its former glory. In the end, everything was riding on this Corlapis deal. Were it not for you, this barren wasteland in the mountains would have become my final resting place. Wow! That's the second heir we've met in this town. I'm sorry, what? Uh, nothing. Oh, here's your book back. Wonderful. Legend of the Shattered Halbert. I was beginning to think that Guhua rascal had swindled me. Do people really look down on the Guhua clan so much? Actually, the art is centuries old and was once held in high esteem. But now it has faded beyond recognition. To instigate a revival, you need to inject some fresh blood, but it's hard to attract budding young talent to a dying art. And so it becomes a vicious cycle. 
In any case, Guhua kids these days. Take that young rascal Xingqiao, for instance. For all his talk about repaying kindness with kindness and whatnot, what has he done to show for it? You're the ones who've displayed a genuine sense of responsibility. Maybe a Guhua renaissance is just around the corner. Ah, uh, what does it matter? Anyway, you wanted the Liyue volume of the Tevat Travel Guide, didn't you? I'll fetch it for you. It's yours to keep. In addition, here is but a small token of appreciation for your huge generosity. I've almost forgotten about that. My ore is sold, and my treasured books have returned. I can't believe it. Uh, what? What was that? Paimon saw something fall out. Oh, N nothing, nothing. That little rascal surely isn't. I swear I'll reclaim my lost fortune. And there we have it. That was a combination of two quests. And I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Bye.